Earl Galanchoff, foreman here at Township Chevrolet for another edition of Tech Talk. And we're just kind of in our how-to segment, kind of simple things you guys can do at home or if you're stuck on the side of the road. So today we're going to go over boosting a vehicle. So it's kind of one of those things that uh, kind of makes people nervous. And uh, there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to do it. And if you do it the wrong way, you can cause yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of damages. So we got a couple of vehicles here. We're going to show you the proper way to boost it with a set of cables, also with a booster pack if you're lucky enough to have one of those. You can get them online now pretty cheap. They're like kind of a small handheld kind of deal. Uh, it's something you plug in your cigarette lighter, charges when you're driving. Once it's charged up, you unplug it, throw it in the trunk, and then if you ever need it, it's usually good for a couple of starts. Uh, it's another way to boost yourself without having to rely on someone else's vehicle, and it's also probably the safer way to do it. But if you're stuck, we're going to go through the cables uh, way to boost a vehicle, and uh, we've got two in here, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so you come out to your car first thing in the morning, really cold morning, maybe the battery's getting weak, uh, or you left the lights on, or you left the door open, or whatever the case may be, you come out of the mall, and your car won't start, and you think it's a dead battery. Uh, easiest way to tell is usually you'll have, uh, gauges will be fluctuating, you'll have a lot of sweeping of the gauges, uh, radio may be coming, kind of flashing on and off, flickering. Um, you may hear a bunch of relays clicking, and when you go to crank the car over, or you press the start button, you'll actually hear like a, a heavy click, 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 click noise. That's usually a sure sign that you've got a dead battery. So we're going to do the booster pack uh, way first, kind of the easiest thing to do. So one of the things you want to do is when you're either hooking up booster pack or cables, you want to uh, hook up your positive first. Um, it, usually the positive will be a, a red cable or a red cover or something. The battery will almost always have, or the cover will have a positive and negative sign. Now this is a good example because uh, this vehicle had a red cover over top of the positive uh, uh, cable here and over time someone's broke it, it's come off of there, it's not there anymore. So now you're dealing with two black cables, which one's positive, which one's negative. So you're going to check, look at the battery here and you'll have a positive sign on the battery. Uh, now this one obviously it's covered up here. So this cover here does come off of this car. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. Oh, and if you look, there's your red cable. And we know we're into a positive side, feeds all the fuses, so this is the positive side in this battery. Um, this is the negative side for, uh, for the Chev owners. If you look down here, Phil, you'll see this is your amp clamp, which is on the negative side of the batteries. Is that little circle thing with, the, with this going to it, which is on the negative side, so that's another sure way to tell too. So color's definitely the way to go. Kind of makes it simple. This is red, red to red, you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we're clamped on the cable very well. Now, one thing you want to do is if the battery's going dead for whether it be an undercharge situation or maybe it was overcharged and it was boiled, there is gases in some of these batteries that can cause an explosion if, if you, you know, have sparks. So a couple of things you want to do. Make sure the key in the vehicle shut off before you hook up the cables. Your heater and all that stuff is off. Your lights are off. Anything else you may have turned on. You want as little a load as you possibly can. Another smart thing to do is too is have the window rolled down with the keys either either in it or take the keys out uh, with the window up. So sometimes what'll happen is when these body control modules and computers that control your uh, interior functions like your, your door locks, sometimes when they get that shock of electricity when you hook up the booster pack or the other vehicle, I've seen them lock the doors before. So just something to keep in mind, either keep the keys in your pocket or roll your window down, one or the other. Um, the best spot to put the ground is somewhere uh, other than the battery if you can. So you're gonna to wanna to go to something heavy, something metal on the engine block. Some vehicles in the strut towers will have a ground location. You can see this car has one here, but unfortunately it's so close to the battery, you might as well just jump off of the battery if you have to. So to try to avoid sparks close to the battery, we're gonna hook it somewhere else metal. So if you look here, there's these two hooks. Um, they're fastened right to the engine block. There's uh, ground cables that go from the engine block to the body and from the body to the battery. So when we hook this up here, this is essentially the same as hooking it to the battery. So you'll see, you can see it's fairly rusty in there, Phil. And the better you, the, the cleaner it is, the better the connection. So sometimes what you do is we just open these up. Cause you I mean, you could be doing this on the side of the road or just rub it up and down a few times and that'll kind of clean the rust out of the area. Jump in the vehicle and give it a start. Once the car is running, uh, I like to leave the cables hooked up just for a minute. You don't want to put too much of a load on the alternator trying to charge that battery that's gone completely stone dead. So in this case, booster pack's great. 
if someone's boosting you obviously and they're in a rush you can't make them wait around so you're kind of you're kind of stuck where you are so but if you can i like to leave this on for a few minutes sometimes you'll actually hear the alternator kind of a, a heavier whining noise that maybe you're not used to hearing and that could be because the alternator is working overtime trying to charge that battery up uh, the nice thing about that 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 amp clamp that i showed you that's on the negative cable on this battery uh, a lot of the newer vehicles i know the chevs do for sure and a lot of the other, other manufacturers have a battery saver mode. So what that means is while this uh, battery is at a low state of health, uh, the car will actually shut off some accessories that you don't need. Like may, maybe you're, when you get jump in your car and you start driving the road, you notice your rear defogger's not working or your heated mirror's not working or even your heater fan's not going full speed like it used to. That's because the, the car, the computers in the car are saying, okay, this battery's in bad shape. Uh, we're going to focus on charging that up right now so we're going to shut off some of the stuff that you don't need obviously it's going to leave your headlights your wipers on all that kind of stuff that's safety related uh, and it might dial back some of the stuff that's not so important so just something to keep in mind once you get it boosted it may take a little while for the car to kind of act normal and for all your accessories and stuff to work so once that's done obviously you're going to put the covers back on uh, and you're going to close your hood and you're down the road so in my opinion, the best thing to do would be if this is the vehicle that is uh, that's running okay, and this is the one that starts fine. This is the one you're getting the boost from. Uh, I like to start the vehicle up and have it running uh, while you're boosting everything. Uh, that way, you're not putting a load from both cars on that one battery. So I'm going to shut it off, but we're going to assume at this point that this thing is running. So you're going to start the vehicle. Uh, same thing. I like to roll the windows down. That way, we're not into uh, doors locking just in case something must ever ever go wrong and there's the order and how you're going to do this pretty simple so a lot of guys will go ahead and they'll put the cables on one side then you've got positive negative they're live if they touch together they're shortened out um, what i like to do is i like to take the cables and clamp the cable on itself so it's le less chance of it to touch they're not running close together so you're going to go ahead and you're going to do red you can see this vehicle here same thing this caravan, it's got the red cable. It's got the black cable over here and the red cable here. You can see it down there. Uh, on top of the battery, you can actually see a positive sign there, Phil, and if you can get in to see that one. It actually says positive there and it's negative on that side. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on the positive cable first on that end. And then we're gonna come over to this car and we're gonna put the positive side on this one. So you got both positives hooked up, no negatives. Then you're gonna go back to the the other car you're getting the boost from and you're going to put the negative on there then you're going to come back to this car the car that needs the boost and you're going to do the same thing and put it on the engine ground and try to stay away from the battery so that's how you're going to properly hook it up you're going to come over here van's already running now we've got the car running so at this point i like to let both cars run and I just take it off in the reverse order. So what I usually do is you'll pull this one off of here. I like to clamp it on here again so it can't get up and touch anywhere. You're gonna pull the negative off this side and now you're okay to pull positive. Come over to this car, pull the positive and both are done. Same thing, if the person's not in a rush or it's a family member or someone you know that's giving you the boost, just leave the vehicle hooked up for a few minutes just to let it uh, kind of help charge the battery so it's kind of getting charged from both alternators have as little of a load as you can on this like obviously if someone's boosting you if they've got their heater on their this thing's got front and rear heat both of them are on the heated seats are on the wipers are going the headlights are on turn as many accessories off of the vehicle you're boosting from it's just easier on that vehicle's charging system and you don't have to worry about you know causing this guy any headaches down the road either so uh that's the gist of a boost and then what you'll do is obviously if uh, if the battery's gone dead, it's for a reason either. A, there was a there's a draw on the battery, so something is staying on, whether it's something you left on, or there's an issue or a short somewhere in the car that's out of your control that the car is keeping on in itself, um, or the battery itself is getting weak, or the charging system is not working properly. Now, normally if your charging system is the issue, uh, that's usually a, where a, a, a car will quit. So if you've got an alternator that's gone bad, your car will run off the battery until the battery's dead, then the car will quit. If you've got a battery that's bad and you boost it and you start it, essentially you could drive from here to Vancouver if you never had to shut the car off 
and it would run solely off the alternator itself. So if you've got a battery that's getting weaker going dead, there is a way to test that. And we do have testers here. Most shops have them. We put, put the tester across there, we press a few buttons. We tell it what kind of battery it is, uh, whether it's a flooded or AGM. And then it, we put the cold cranking amps of the battery in and then it'll come back and it'll do a readout and tell us if it's, because there's two things it's looking for. It's looking for voltage and it's looking for amperage. So voltage is obviously the voltage in the battery and amperage is the ability to push that voltage to the things it needs to go. So you got to have both to kind of, to make the battery work properly. So uh, it's not a, not a big deal to take a battery test. It's only a few minutes on most machines and that'll tell you if you need a battery or not or whether and most of those battery testers will test the charging and start, starting system at the same time. So if you've boosted your car and it's running fine and you know, okay, I see that I left the dome light on, then obviously wait till the next time you give it a start. Uh, once you've got it started, you're gonna probably wanna let it run for at least 10 or 15 minutes to kind of charge that battery up again. If your car has got a gauge in it, uh, great, perfect. Let that gauge go up to where it should be, which is anywhere from uh, 12 volts to 15 volts, depending on uh, what the alternator is demanding to charge the battery. Um, on any of these ones with the amp clamp, uh, the alternator is controlled by the computer. So after it's dead, you're going to see that really high, probably 15 amps. And once it starts to come down around 14 volts, that's usually a good sign that the battery is charged up and it it's okay to shut it off again. So um, yeah, those are kind of uh, kind of quick tips on how to how to how to boost the car. And obviously, if uh, it continues to happen, there's obviously a problem. You should bring it in and get it checked out. So that's been boosting a battery. If there's any uh, any questions anyone has, drop it in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, we wanna put lots of content out there for you guys. Any uh, suggestions you guys have, uh, anything you wanna know about car related or anything you wanna learn about car related, just drop it in the comments below and we'll do our best to get that, uh, get that on there for you. Uh, another edition of Tech Talk and we look forward to seeing you.